Mike, I'm sorry. People are so interested in what's going on. It's just a wild news cycle right now. Should Donald Trump not post bail? That'd be very interesting. I mean, you have to ask, why does Fannie Willis think that a former president of the United States, one of the most recognizable figures on the planet, who has a 27 Secret Service protective detail, law enforcement agents, following every one of his moves, does Fannie Willis think that Donald Trump is really a flight risk here? I mean, give me a break. This is part of the charade by the Democrats. This is lawfare. This is election interference. She's clearly coordinating with the Biden Justice Department, including Jack Smith. She was asked about that at her press conference and she refused to answer. And it seems like that was the only thing that she refused to answer. I mean, she she talked, talked, talked. She talked way too much. And then she couldn't answer whether she's coordinating with Jack Smith and the Biden Justice Department. I, I hope that she does release this mugshot of President Trump, this trophy that the left has wanted for so many years, because it's going to backfire them. They're, they're so stupid yeah. that they don't understand that when you release this mugshot of President Trump, it's going to offend the American people and it's going to help him politically. It's going to put President Trump back in the White House. So... A couple of things. One, uh, talk, 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 being long-winded. I deeply apologize for the delay in getting to you today. I'm also guilty of said thing. But aren't the Democrats here guilty of racketeering? Would, yeah. I mean, wouldn't I mean, you be able to flip this charge directly around on them with their coordinated efforts to go after Donald Trump? I mean, wouldn't this be racketeering to rig an American election process? It wouldn't when in, in your three-week reign of terror... Couldn't you bring racketeering charges against Jack Smith, Merrick Garland, all the way down through the tree of Al Alvin Bragg, Fannie Willis? Yeah, I mean, it, during my three-week reign of terror as Trump's acting attorney general, before I leave town with my pardon from President Trump, I have five lists that I, I'm ready to go, Ben. And the list number one is fire. I'm going to fire as many people as I can. And list number two is an indictment. Frank I could die to ham sandwich and these goofball Democrat prosecutors like Alvin Bragg and Jack Smith and F Fannie Willis and the, the civil fraud prosecutor Tish James up in New York. And we may have two other goofballs, the Michigan Attorney General and this Arizona Attorney General who only won because they committed fraud out there. They shut down the election in Arizona. They sent the wrong ballots out, the wrong ballot sizes. People checked in. And then they waited in line. They couldn't vote. They got sent to another place. They were checked into the prior place. And the Democrats wouldn't object it to a three-hour extension of the election so these people would vote. Otherwise, there's no chance that this Arizona attorney general would be even be in office right now. But now this Arizona attorney general, who only got in because the Democrats disenfranchised Republican voters, is now going to go after Trump like the rest of these goofballs and Democrat hellholes. To these Democrats... Please keep going. Like Donald Trump said, President Trump said, I only need one more indictment. Yeah, I only need one more indictment to be president. It, it really is the iron law of wokeism, though, isn't it? It's just complete projection. Everything that you are guilty of, whether it be racism or rigging elections, like you are going to project that onto your enemies. That is the iron law. They are committing racketeering charges. They are racketeering right now. They are colluding in order to prevent Donald Trump from becoming president. Now, it's going to backfire. But it does, it, it does like ring so true that they are, what they're going after Trump for, they are guilty of, especially in Georgia, which is such a ham-fisted, I mean, the Georgia thing is like almost more embarrassing than Alvin Bragg, what he brought against Trump. Am I wrong? Uh, they're, they're both pretty stupid indictments, but it's, it's a, I guess it's a race to the bottom by these dumb, woke Democrat prosecutors. But I would say this. There is a federal law called, there's a federal criminal statute. It's called conspiracy against rights. And I guarantee you that when Trump's back in office, his attorney general, his acting attorney general, will be probably appointing a special counsel to look at this obvious conspiracy against rights where you have these government officials who are using their government power to go after individuals, President Trump, 18 other co-defendants, because they're exercising their rights. They're exercising their First Amendment rights to redress government. That is a conspiracy against rights. That is a felony, right? That is a mm -hmm. that is a serious crime. And they're going to have a healthy dose of their own medicine when Trump is back in the White House. You're seeing all these mugshots come out of the Fulton County Jail. Most of them are lawyers. What does this mean for your profession? 
uh, I mean, it, it, it means that the Democrats have turned America into a third world Marxist hellhole. And this is exactly what you and I have been discussing, Ben, for the last year, going back to the moral law. This is predictable and predictive. This is a five months uh, lawfare against President Trump. Alvin Bragg for the non-crime of a businessman settling a nuisance claim. Uh, Jack Smith for the non-crime of a former president having his presidential records in the office of former president, which is allowed by the Presidential Records Act. And both Jack Smith and Fannie Willis for the non-crime of objecting to a presidential election, which is allowed by the Electoral Count Act of 1887 and twisting arms politically is allowed by the First Amendment. And then there's a civil fraud by New York Attorney General Tish James for the non-fraud of a businessman paying back sophisticated Wall Street banks in full with interest. These are goofballs. This is all a fraud uh, against the American people. This is not real. These are not real crimes. This is obvious lawfare. They're obviously colluding. They waited 30 months after President Trump left office to, to all of a sudden race to bring all these charges. And after they waited 30 months, they're telling these Democrat judges and these Democrat hellholes, oh, we have to have these trials very fast. We, you know, it's urgent that we have these trials. And they, they stack them uh, between now uh, through the Republican primary and, through the, and up until the general election. Why do they have to do it now? Why can't they wait until after the American people vote on November 5th, 2024? Why are they interfering in this election? And the reason is obvious. They fear that President Trump is going to beat Joe Biden like a drum on November 5th, 2024. Yes. And I believe that like they are going to assist in that. So, like shockingly so. But that's just biblical justice for you, right? Like you'd, you'd like your your evil plans will be turned inside out. And it's going to be delightful. Our final question for you, Mike, from Joseph McDonald, the Benny Brigade question of the day directly for Mike Davis sent in by great patriot Joseph McDonald. Mike, thank you for all that you do. When Trump wins in 24, would you be likely serving on his staff? If possible, could you explain your priorities while serving? Uh-oh. Here we go. Reign well, of terror. As, as Trump's acting attorney general for three weeks during my reign of terror, I have five lists. Number one is fire. Uh, number two is indict. Number three is deport. Number four is detain and like D.C. Gulag or Gitmo for the, for our worst enemies like Joe Biden and every one of his family members, except for the five year old granddaughter who they finally acknowledged after five years. And uh, uh, list number five is recommended pardons. And every uh, Republican in this lawfare will get a recommended pardon. And then we're just going to bring it's I call it the dead chicken strategy. We're going to bring holy hell against Biden and these Democrats to give them a healthy dose of their own medicine so they lose the taste for this lawfare against republicans that's exactly right mutual assured destruction it's very great it's a really good tactic actually yep. mike davis thank you so much he's someone that the left does truly fear yet you, you have to actually have people that that the left fears and mike davis is one of them please follow mike on x 137,000 people can't be wrong and support mike at the article three project godspeed mike thank you ben All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mike Davis just previewed what may happen today and what will happen in a Trump term 2.0. Trust me, I know a thing about a lot of things. Mike Davis is beloved by Team Trump and is uh, not, he's hes not just blowing smoke when he says that he has a list. Mike Davis is ready to go and he it doesn't have any friends in D.C. He does live in D.C., but he doesn't, have any, he doesn't have any friends. This is the guy who got us the Trump Supreme Court. Mike Davis is bare knuckle brawler. We're so honored to have him on the show. I'm so honored to call him uh, our in-house attorney here at the Benny Sh 